Welcome, fellow kings and queens of the quarantine. Um, got a few things in the mail today, and so wanted to do a little bit of a review. Um, definitely a product I've been looking forward to for a little while. A lot of hype, so we're going to see if it lives up to it. So we're going to be looking at AK's third generation of acrylics. So first off, I'm going to go through and show you, like... What's some of the things that they're talking about? What's uh, some of the benefits? Uh, what are the different types that they have? Because they've got a different range. Then we're going to run a few tests. And we might have a follow-up with this as well. If there's a couple of different things that you would like me to test on top of these. So we'll be using a couple of different thinners for it. I got Mr. Leveling Thinner, IPA, and good old water. So we'll be doing few tests with that. So first of all, I've got their catalog open. And the interesting thing is they have a bunch of different types. So we get into the orange label. That's just basic, whatever that means. I guess just regular colors. So not sure what specifically they're talking about there. I'll have to do a little more research. The other thing is they get into the cyan label. And these are specifically more of a pastel colors. So I don't know if they're specific colors that work well for figures and vehicles, buildings, that kind of thing. So I'll do some more playing around with those. As far as what I have today, I've got a range of metallic colors. And so that's going to be the blue label. From there, I've got intense, the yellow. And so those have a pigment high purity and high concentration for vivid colors, which is just a white. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, brown label gets into ink. So tempted to try these out as well to see if um, they do really well with details. And so we'll be looking at that later. And then gray label really is just getting into like their metal medium, crackle medium, different things like that for glazes and all that. So beyond there, let's take a look at the actual jars. The shape of it's a little bit different. Uh, they don't have the metal ball, uh, metal bear ball bearing inside of it, but I don't know if it really needs it. It's didn't really have to shake it up much. seems like it uh, doesn't separate. From the inside, it has these different grooves in there, so it's less likely to gum up on there. See how that actually runs in the long run, but the other thing is you can put paint into the top so you can identify it, which technically is just something I've been doing for ever. <laughs> so you just have that in just about every other bottle so I can identify it a little bit easier. So that's not anything specifically new. Um, one of the claims that we're going to look at is that it specifically has less clogging, which uh, is definitely interesting. I've got a lot of different acrylics that I use, and that tends to be a problem with just about all of them. So our test medium, since I, I don't have it this time, it's going to be in a further shipment, the darker colors. So I'm actually going to have a dark background. We're going to use a couple of different thinners test that out and then test out durability and a few other things on later tests. All right, for the spring, I've got my Badger 105 Patriot. We'll be using that. And I'm gonna start out with just the white. Still give it a little bit of shake. Let's see if that's good enough quite possibly. And then just to show you a little bit of the consistency, the side of the cup, very much something that you would do for just paintbrush use. So um, definitely, definitely something you would want to thin. That's way too thick. So that's, yeah, it's not even really getting to the bottom of the cup. That's pretty bad. So first up, we're gonna use just the basic old run-of-the-mill water. 
And I've heard about a 50-50 consistency. But we're going to do a little playing around with that. And just use the standard old, make sure it looks like we're just painting with milk. Okay, so I'm going to mix that until I think I've got a pretty good mix. And you can side the cup. Looks pretty good. So I'm going to go with that as my starting point. Don't have a measurement with my PSI. I'm just usually measure it by feel. Okay. So starting out, I think I actually have it too thin. Mm, nope, that's actually doing pretty good. So this is just with water and some of you are going to laugh. No, I'm not a professional airbrusher by any means. I've been doing this for a while, but by no means like some pro. So a pretty good spray pattern. So I can get some fine detail. Uh, Getting into some runs. But it can still do some pretty decent detail work on it. But as you can see, it's spidering. Got it a bit too thin for that kind of work. And go from there. The other thing that I want to do with this detail work is see if it clogs up. This is usually when I run into the problem with the clogging. Mm. As you can see, it's kind of intermittent. So, I'm getting a little bit of splatter at the beginning. That's less than ideal. But, probably better than the MIG. Okay, uh, the last test that I'm gonna do with each of these samples is I'm gonna flood it and just see how cooperative it is from there. If it's gonna just level or what. Whoops, too much. And then let's thicken it up a bit. I'm gonna add some more of the gopoly goop. And yep, also, I know I'm going to get comments. I'm a barbarian. Just mixing in the cup. Okay, let's see how this improves it at all. Whoa. Hmm. Uh, yeah. I don't know. And it should be noted, this is the first time I've ever used this product. But adding a little bit of thickness to it, you can see, mm, kind of just spidering. So let's do some thick. Yeah, lay it on way too thick. Let's see if that levels or if it just stays that nasty goop. We'll come back to it. All right, so test number two has come up with a unexpected result. Let's see if you can see there that it's just kind of getting into clumps. Um, right, so it might be that this doesn't like straight IPA. So let me fiddle with that a little more. Well, hmm, that looked very promising. So I'm not even going to waste it on that. Let's uh, just see what it gets.
Yep. Basically the result I would expect. Oh, that's just... Oh, that's gorgeous. Woo. Ooh, yeah. Now that may make some kind of result that you would want. I don't know. But... Yeah, straight IPA, uh, no. That's not, not, a uh, something we'd want to do, it looks like. So I don't know if it's specifically with this formula versus some of the others. So I'll try with the metal and see if it reacts differently, but I'm assuming they all have the same carrier to it all. Um, so, yeah, there's one result. Let's, uh, clean up this and we'll try, uh, Mr. Color. Let's see how that will how that works. All right, that was fun. So I think I've got it pretty pretty clean now. So enough to do this test. We'll see if it causes any other issues. I might have to do a thorough clean, but I hopefully don't have to. Um, so I tried the silver, and yeah, IPA does not like that at all. As soon as it hit it, it just avoided it like the plague. Probably not the best choice of words right now, but whatever. Um, so let's try the one that I've got the most hope for. I think this one has the most promise by far. Seems to work magically with a lot of the other products like getting into uh, Tamiya. Okay. So far looking good. In fact, I think I just gave it way too much. Hmm, dang. Well, that is also a result, huh? You see the stringiness of the thing going, oh, that's, yeah, it does not like that at all. Probably just should have tried that in a cup, but whatever. You can learn from my idiocy. So this would be a fail. Nope. Uh, doesn't want to mix. It's just turn into string. Hmm. Okay, well. It looks like uh, all the tests that I'm going to do for the rest of the night is just going to come down to water. But maybe I'll need to buy their thinner. Um, the only other thinner that I can really use, I've got some Vallejo Flow Aid, I guess, that would technically work. So I'll uh, spend the next 15 minutes cleaning this piece of crap. And then uh, uh, we'll get into using um, some Flow Flow Aid. See what that does, just for kicks and giggles. All right, so uh, Flow Aid obviously does mix. Um, not quite the ratio, of course, I'd want to have, and it's not really designed to just be flooded on. So I'm curious just to see what happens if we have a mix of water, Flow Aid, and the AK. Okay, that looks pretty good for consistency. So I've completely cleaned up the airbrush. Which took a ton of work. I just completely dismantled the whole entire thing. Make sure I got all that gunk out. Okay. I might have to do like a full clean and then come back to this because as you can see it's just backing up. And... Mm, sure, nice, fine, thin, but... And I know some of you are just cringing right now at all this, but yeah. Um, today is definitely not my night for airbrush. I'm going to have to make sure this is just completely cleaned out. I'm getting some backfill going on. Maybe... 
and blast it out. So, let's try just one last spray. Happens if I lay a little, quite a bit, quite a bit of material down. Let's see what happens. As you can see with the white, it really did not lay down and level like you'd want. So not my favorite there. But curious of this silver, if I just blast it on, see if that levels and come back to it. But I'm going to go clean this airbrush thoroughly and come back and we're just going to use good old fashioned water and we're going to do the rest of our tests from there. But hey, at least you can learn from my stupidity. Works out pretty well. All right. So I've got my airbrush deep cleaned now and we're not going to worry about any of the other tests we're going to do from here is just use regular old water till I can actually get some of uh, the uh, their specific thinner and try that out. Um, thing that's interesting, flow aid definitely caused it to have a long dry time. It's been about 15 minutes and you just wipe that away. So we're just gonna stick with water and go through a few more tests so let's see if this works a little bit better. A little different ratio of water to the uh, paint. Let's see if this starts running a bit better. Okay, not bad. And then see if we can build it up pretty nice. It starts to flood, but hmm. Let's see if how that looks after it settles. For detail, not bad. Um, you can see. Eh can get away from you, but to be honest, what paint can't. So it's not foolproof. You can definitely put on too much. But if you're good with trigger control, not bad. Not bad at all. Mm. I don't know. Definitely gotta be spot on with the trigger control. Hmm. Well, let's move on to our next test. So I'm gonna paint quite a bit more of it right here. We're gonna see how durable it is when we get into uh, peeling off with tape. Oh man, yeah. Water, not exactly good. Just wants to have all that surface tension. Uh, yeah, not good. So maybe let's try it with a little bit of a thicker formula. See if that works a little better. Okay, yeah, it's definitely thicker. Hmm. 
So I've increased. It's a little bit thicker, but you can kind of see now it's breaking apart a bit. Can do pretty good if you have the right trigger control. We just have a little bit of it on, can't flood it on. Uh, let me also reduce my pressure. Let's see how that well works. Hmm. No. That's a little bit hard to, to see on it. So I'm gonna fill up this and then we're gonna go and switch to your to the tests. All right, so while that's uh, letting that dry all the way, I wanted to try one other thing. So the other thing I was finding is, is this better or how, just how does it compare to the MIG paints? So I've got a couple of those. I'm gonna give it a check. So I've got it lightly thinned. I'll check some of the patterns. Mm. I don't know if it's easy to tell, but Seems uh, MIG is a little easier to use. Use it on a lot of different stuff already and it's pretty good. I've had a couple of issues with it. I may have said that I'm doing acrylics um, primarily because I don't have a window or any way to let those fumes uh, evacuate from the room. So let's see. A little harder to mess up the MIG. You can definitely do it, of course, but pretty similar to Feather. Uh, it might need to be thinned a little bit more. But, I don't know, comparable. So, we'll let that dry with it here too and, yeah, whatever. And we'll compare this to the rest of them as well with the tests with uh, tape, um, getting into how well it stands up to different weathering products and all of that as soon as that dries. All right, so now let's do the tape test. So just using Tamiya tape right here. Okay. Seems to be fairly resilient. Not bad. And it might also not be fully cured. It seems a little bit tacky. But let's see if it's really thin mix. Not bad. Um, out of curiosity, let's see what a toothpick. Yeah, not fully cured. You can toothpick it. No scrape right off. So probably would want to wait overnight before you do anything um, with uh, sanding or anything like that. Mm, but not bad.
I guess. So, try that again after it's cured, maybe an evening. Let's see, MIG. Uh, similar. Maybe that needs to cure a little bit more, but pretty similar. So let's grab a new piece of tape just to make it fair. Okay. Hmm, nothing coming off. Maybe if I do, nope, that didn't really, uh, do anything either. Hmm. Um, this part that's exposed. Yeah, both are seem pretty resilient. I mean, let's try this. So I used Vallejo primer, which is usually pretty bad. <laughs> okay, there you go. So not exactly saying much, but it beats uh, the Vallejo primer test, I guess. So. Yeah, that comes off, but hmm, that didn't come off. But ah, maybe I got a contaminated corner. I don't know. Maybe that's a contaminated corner too. I don't know. So. When it comes down to tape, looks like both are pretty good. All right, next up, let's put on some panel line wash. Got some deep gray. Let's see how well they work with it. That's it for a sec. Okay, we'll let that sit for a sec and then we'll see how it rubs off. Okay, about a minute later. So just cut and swab. There's a little bit of a reaction, but I don't know. It could be that just this paint, I think, needs a little bit more time to cure. But let's do... Ooh. That's a result. So definitely, definitely works better. Um, AK is definitely better for running your different washes and stuff over it. But um, if you do a clear coat over this, then who cares? So that's that's one result. But I'm going to give this a little more time to dry and cure a little bit more, uh, put a hair dryer to it, something like that. And uh, we'll give that another shot. All right, so it's been a little bit longer along with the uh, application of hair dryer to just kind of quick cure it. And I'm just gonna lay it on, cause why not? And for this corner, I'm gonna kind of push hard Hmm. Can't really see much of anything coming off. Okay. 
Okay, so you can see it's a little more resilient, but it did wear down to the plastic. I don't know. Maybe I do need to be a little more patient and let it dry overnight, but I mean, with acrylics, supposedly you don't have to do that. I don't know. Uh, either way, definitely more resilient than MIG, but uh, not perfect. So probably would still do clear coat just to protect before I do my weathering. All right, so what's the takeaway from this? Well, when it comes down to spray patterns, I mean, I'm not the biggest judge of it. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of super fine detail work. Um, can you accomplish it with both of them? Yeah, um, definitely possible with either. Uh, I would probably pick MIG over it for one reason. Uh, you can thin MIG with the leveling thinner and get pretty good result with that. So when it comes down to straight spray pattern, mm, it's a toss. But when we go over to uh, look at what thinners we can use, well, as far as what I have, I don't have an extensive array of different thinners. Um, the only one that really worked was water. So um, AK, yeah, did not work at all with leveling thinner, it fell apart. Used isopropyl alcohol, fell apart. So not good. Uh, when it came down to resilience for peeling, um, I couldn't really tell much of a difference. And then when it came down to resilience for getting into like weathering and things like that, AK definitely performed better. Um, wasn't super resilient, but definitely didn't just start etching into it just like you had with the MIG right away. So that's a result in itself. Um, beyond that, uh, if there was something that I did wrong, I'm sure there very much is. So if there's some paint experts that can tell me what I did wrong, what I can do to kind of improve these AKs, um, am I going to get this because it's uh, more resilient? Eh, not really because I'll just do a clear coat. Um, as far as the tip clogging less, that's a benefit that we have for with AK. Um, is it worth it? I don't know. I mean, when I use Mr. Color and MIG, works pretty well for your pattern, works pretty well for clip, I mean, the, uh, the tip clogging. So, I don't know. Um, Honestly, I don't think I'm going to be running to the store and getting a ton of these, but it is definitely an interesting product. Um, if there is something in the comments that I'm doing wrong, let me know. Uh, maybe there is something that uh, you do just a little bit different, use a special thinner, and then bam, changes the properties and works so much better. By all means, put it in the comments. We'll try this again with different materials. Um, but hopefully you learned something tonight. I definitely did. And we'll see you next time.